Yo, what's going on guys? We're finally getting around to which summons the Sunstone. If you have not watched the previous videos, I did do another video on which summons to reduce and also did one on which weapons to use thy musket bars on. So you may want to give those a link before watching the, I mean, give those a watch before watching this one. Now with this video, it's going to be similar in format to the video with the Damascus bars where I'll be ranking them based on tiers from tier one being the highest priority to whatever tier lowest I decide to stop at. I don't know currently at the time of making this video, though I'm guessing tier four or five. Now, one thing I will also mention is that sunstones are a little bit harder to acquire compared to a Damascus bar. Therefore, I'll be a little bit more strict and recommending summons for people to go after as sunstones cannot be farmed as easily as a Dimuscus bar unfortunately as Dimuscus bars can be gotten from gold moons and from the in-game shop and guild wars no not guild wars and dvds while sunstones can only get from gw it can be gotten from arcarum which is limited currently and it can be gotten from dvds as well now, another thing with this video is that just because something is a high tier doesn't mean it's the best fit for you. For example, if you're building a bar in a pool, even though let's say Agni may be a top tier uh, tier summon, doesn't mean that it's something you use the Sunstone as it does not help your pool you're currently building. So just know that just because something is a high tier doesn't mean it's the best thing for you as a player to Sunstone because you're not building that therefore the value of it is not nearly as good though however some things can be sunstones purely for a friend summon if you want to get better friends overall in game as they do help when it comes to farming fast having good friend summons now another thing i want to mention and the final thing i'll mention is that i do not recommend using any sunstones on magna summons i know people want to use it to save quartz but just know end game and long term, it does hurt you. So this, if you're going to use it on a Magna Summon, it's your own choice and just don't regret it when you later down the line may have needed that Sunstone. With that, let's get started with the video. If you want to leave a like, I'd be much appreciated. And also if you can share this video to people who are lower rank, who may have a hard time figuring out what summons they may want to use Sunstones on. But that's all. Let's get started. Now, let's get into the first tier, and this is the first time ever, tier zero, meaning that these are the most important summons you definitely wanna go after. This is the most value you're gonna get out of one sunstone, and with this tier, we'll be looking at the Arcarum summons, meaning judgment, death, sun, uh, hangman, moon, and star. I, I, I got kind of stuck there for a moment, but these summons, they give the most damage per sunstone. Generally, most sunstones, most summons take three sunstones to get max limit break, and then you need to full limit break them. This one only takes one sunstone, and they give you a flat damage boost to any Ellie on Ellie. So, for example, if you're, if you're building death, it will give you a flat damage boost against light enemies. If you're building sun, it gives you a flat damage boost against wind, meaning you just get, no matter how strong you are, you will get more damage no matter what. It does not matter. These summons are crucial for on element gameplay and pretty much can make or break uh, you from MVP or let's say vice MVP and stuff like that. Now, some of them do have very great call effects. For example, death, Sun, Hangman, their call effects are spectacular, star as well, and these can be used off element as well. So they do have value even off element with some of their calls being really strong. So even if you're running off element, you may wanna run some of them because their call effects is really good. And their call will turn one upon being a full limit break. So very, very, very good. Now, one thing I will mention is you're probably wondering what about the other four that were not mentioned being Tower, Temperance, I believe, Devil, and 
uh, justice. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah, so with these summons, they don't really give you a damage boost. Rather, they give you a health boost. Health boost is generally not that important. Now, you may have somebody be like, oh, my rank is low, so the health may help you. Um, generally, it's not that important. The only raid where health even matters at all is FA. And 30k, there, there are pools, like there's weapon pools where you can really build it. Though, I guess for some Magna pools, let's say Magna Wind. Well, not anymore to the, of the Celestial weapons. But um, depending on the pool, like Magna Water is probably a good example. Magna Water has a hard time getting the 30k health. So I can kind of see why some people may want to build those. But I would recommend not building those uh, priority tier zero. They will be in the lower tiers. But I just want to speak about them here because I know people are going to ask about it. So I just wanted to throw it out there. But with that, let's get on to the next tier. On to the actual tier one. And we have another tie. This time it's a 12-way tie. And these are the primals and the demi primals. Both are extremely valuable as they give you another option to build a pool that not everyone generally can build due to the fact of them lacking the primal summon that they want to use to build it. Now, with each primal, they are extremely strong. And I always recommend as a player you build towards the primal that you have the weapons for. I would not generally recommend any free to play primals early on as you don't even have a dark opus weapon, full limit break, I mean ultra limit break to even support it. Therefore, they are actually usually inferior to uh, magna pools early on. So there, there are special cases where this is not the case, but generally I recommend building towards a primal that you have weapons to build it with, grand weapons, as these are generally just way more powerful than magna pools even when Magna, rest in peace, Tiamat, unfortunately. The same thing applies to Demi Primals. The only difference with Demi is that they don't get the call effect that the Full Limit Break Primals get currently, but what they do give is the ability to reduce them. And with the, reduce, uh, with the ability to reduce, you do get back three Sunstones, which you can then put into the actual Primal if you happen to pull it. This is very, very good if you happen to be unlucky and you want to build a pool, but you weren't lucky enough to build a primal, you do have this option. You only get it one time though, unfortunately, and most players I, uh, most players probably already picked, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, as they did not let you re-pick after the update we just got in recently with the full limit break primal. So this may not be helpful to people who are already mid game, but for people who are actually new, this is very beneficial for you because you still have the option to pick your Demi Primal. Now, I already mentioned, as I mentioned, the free to play thing is very important. I have to stress this, that free to play Primals are generally not worth building early on. Now you can build them later on if you want to, but generally I, I would recommend building a, a pay to win version of the Primal you want to go with. Now that would generally, ha you have to have the character. For example, if you want to build like Varuna, I recommend going with Drang Balls. So you, you need these things as to get most value out of the primal pool you want to build. Now we're going to go on to the next tier one summon and we have a actual, not a tie this time. We have a Bahamut, the mascot of Psy Games, the dragon that they love so much. Bahamut, Bahamut, Bahamut. This dragon has a five star one of the only five star got the summons in the game totally no bias at all it has the highest stats in the game no bias at all <laughs> there's clearly no bias here with this summon this summon is extremely strong upon getting it to five star um it's generally not too hard to get it to five star though depending on where you are in the game if you're very early on it could be a problem and you may have to settle with three star or four star Whatever you can get, I recommend rushing it to five star as quickly as possible. As you gain a cooldown reduction, having Bahamut come up every six turns and the call is four turns long, it's ridiculous. Um, it's very, very strong and generally good in any element. Um, now, it's not optimal in every element, in every situation, but it's generally good as it's a stat stick. Even if you don't call it, 
it has the highest stats in the game. Therefore, if you're not calling any summons at all, this is just a good summon to throw in to boost their overall stat bonus, which is very good for one turn setups generally, where you're just focusing on doing a one turn burst and you don't really call all your summons. So that's, that's the power of Bahamut. Um, another thing I will mention that it's not a bad friend support summon. Bahamut is pretty okay. Um, generally it depends, um, Hades and Bahamut kind of intertwine. Both of them are perfectly fine. Though it really, it really depends on who's in the lobby and whatnot. We're, uh, we're generally looking at co-op rooms, which is where your friend summons are kind of maybe a problem here and there. So I, I kind of want to mention friend summons as well in these types of videos, just in case people do plan on using these summons for friends. Next, we have Lucifer. Now, Lucifer is very strong as it gives a heal, a 3k heal and revitalize. Also, it gives an attack boost, something I did not mention with Bahamut, but it also gives an attack boost as well for four turns. So this, this is pretty decent. The only problem with Lucifer it does not have the same stat value as Bahamut due to the fact that it has higher HP, but lower attack. And in this game, things with attack have a higher value than health points. That's why if you ever try to plus one something, you'll notice that it's one to health and five to attack. Unfortunately, Lucifer does fall a little bit behind the stat value, though him being also a five star summon, it's very good that he has the second or third highest. I think he's been power crept by Hades now, but I believe he still has, he's still top three in terms of overall stats in the game. So it's very, very, very good. Now for friend summon, Lucifer is pretty universally good for Magna players, though primal players don't want it generally so if you're trying to get primal friends lucifer is probably not the best option but very very good for magna players that they gain ton of value from it now the reason that i don't feel that he's as good as bahamut like i if i would recommend between bahamut and lucifer i would recommend bahamut because early game what you're really looking for is damage not really uh healing the support from the healing that Lucifer gives is really good in pretty much only one raid, and that's Fa high level. It's okay in Ultimate Bahamut as well, but the problem with Ultimate Bahamut is generally you don't get enough turns to get Lucifer up. So uh, Bahamut high level, Ultimate Bahamut high level, kind of lasts around, let's say, 8 to 10 turns with a good run, if not even lower than that. So it's kind of hard to get the heal up, especially if you have bad pink. So he's not really useful there he's good for solo versions though but i mean not everyone's going to solo bahamut high level ultimate bahamut high level so it's really not that important but where he really signs is fa high level it's a very key summon that was pretty much used by every player who had access to it as a way to heal people in the raid not nearly used as much now as people understand the raid and how to dodge damage but it's still okay so he had value in some area, but if you compare Bahamut and Lucifer, Bahamut also has the lower cooldown. So I'm gonna have to give the edge out to Bahamut if you're in the wondering which one the which one the Sunstone first. Now this is gonna be the end of tier one, and you're probably gonna for multiplayer may ask why didn't I mention any Primarchs? Now the problem with this is that Primarchs. The only value any of the Primarchs gain upon being Sunstoned is a 5% damage cap. You need to hit the damage cap to gain value out of that. If you're generally watching a video like this, trying to understand how the game goes, you're not probably hitting damage cap. Maybe maybe on an Ogi with like Octo buff, maybe you can hit damage cap for that one Ogi. But generally, your autos and all the other all the stuff you're doing in the game, your oh and skills probably. Your skills are hitting damage cap too, probably. But all your other stuff, your autos, um, the, which pretty much most of your damage, you're not generally hitting auto cap. So because of that, I don't recommend going out of your way to sunstone the, the primals, my fault, the prime arcs, if you're not hitting damage cap consistently enough. Now, they're good for the stats and stuff, but their call effects do not change upon being full limit break, my fault, match limit break. So that's why I did not recommend any of the primals in tier one. 
Though the only one that does change its call effect a little bit is Michael, as it gains a higher plane damage cap. But that's inconsequential. It's not really that important. So that's why none of the Primarchs are in Tier 1. Hopefully you can understand that. Now, do leave comments on how you guys feel about this video, things that could change, things that I can improve, so I can get a better idea on how I'm going with this. I have changed quite a bit, so do tell me what you guys think about it. And thank you guys for watching. We're going to end the video here because I don't want to make it a 30-minute video. So next time, we'll be looking at Tier 2 and maybe Tier 3 a little bit in there. So thank you guys for watching. Goodbye.